Good evening, this is Bronson's By Any Means Necessary Fantasy Sports Talk for Tuesday, September 15th. It's our first Waiver Wire Wednesday video of the season. I'm very excited to unveil the top Waiver Wire ads for tomorrow morning for week two. Um, you know, those of you who are overwhelmed with who to prioritize and uh, all that stuff, never fear, I'm here to help you. Stay calm, relax. We're gonna get through this. Um, I know in my last video I preached about not overreacting, not panicking. A week one, week one's always the crapshoot of all crapshoots in this silly little game that we play. Um, but you know, um, there were a few players that really caught my eye that I think are legit, um, that I think are, are worth adding. And um, we do have some injuries to replace. Raheem Mostert is now um, out for the year. Uh, he probably should just retire. His body can't handle the wear and tear of the game that he chose to make his profession. And um, we, saw some, we saw some players struggle that, you know, were kind of fringe roster prospects. Anyway, so these, these are some guys that you can change. I have 13 for you. We're gonna make 13 a lucky number. We're not gonna, we're not gonna be scared of 13 anymore. We're gonna turn it into a, a good, a good number. Uh, so 13 top waiver wire ads for you to try and get with your uh, waivers here. Put those waivers in tonight. Get them early tomorrow morning. For those of you on the West Coast, it's around 1.30, 2 a.m. For those of you on the East Coast, um, it's 4.35 a.m. So and so on and so such. I'm, I'm excited to film my videos for the next for this next week in, in an undisclosed location. And uh, I'll be there for the next five days. I fly out tomorrow morning and I come back Monday afternoon, evening-ish. Um, so plenty of time for me to rest up before I gotta get up for work on Tuesday morning. Um, so for those who are still paying attention to baseball who are alive in fantasy baseball playoffs, tomorrow's a decent day for streaming. Um, a couple of guys I didn't put on my list today who are still decent options if you you want to go that route, um, you can private message me or comment for a more in-depth. But my top three streamers for tomorrow, Tyler Miguel of the Mets against the Cardinals. Tyler Miguel has been outstanding over his last three stars. Um, no reason not to trust me against the Cardinals tomorrow. Um, Nestor Cortez of the Yankees at the Orioles. Nestor Cortez has been pitching pretty decent despite the Yankees' struggles. Uh, the Orioles should be an easy win for them. So... Good opportunity for Nestor Cortez. And I like Vladimir Gutierrez of the Reds against the Pirates. Vladimir Gutierrez has had a pretty good season overall. Uh, I know he had struggles for a couple of starts. Um, people have moved on from him. He's now in the streaming tier again after creeping up over 50% because of his success. Um, the Pirates are not a team to be feared, even though uh, the Pirates did kind of whoop, whoop up on Wade Miley and the Reds today, which was disappointing for me because I just picked up Wade Miley for streamer. And uh, I don't know if, if you've ever heard of ESPN Streak. It's a thing on the app. For those of you who have the fantasy app, um, you can pick matchups throughout the day that you think you're going to you know, get a win. Uh, I picked the Reds over the Pirates today. That didn't work out for me. But uh, usually I'm pretty decent at the game overall for the month. Um, uh, but yeah. You know, it's, it, there's no money involved. I think they should have, um, now that sports betting is becoming legal in a lot more states, I think they should have a thing uh, or an app where you can, uh, you know, is, is set up exactly like ESPN Streak, except you bet money. So, like, when I pick my, when I pick the Reds to beat the Pirates, I bet uh, $2 on it or something, you know? Like, where, where I, have a, I have a fund uh, of, like, $100 a month or something, you know, just some arbitrary number. And uh, I just bet <laughs> daily, uh, you know, with small bids or whatever on those matchups. And if, if uh, <laughs> I get ahead, you know, cash out. If I fall behind, you know, put some more money in or you know, whatever, you know, just to make it a little bit more fun for people. I think they, that would be a good app for someone to develop. But, you know, anyways, those are my top streamers for you tomorrow. I, I like those guys. Um, but let's get to it. Let's get to football top 13. We're going to start with the quarterbacks. 
Uh, I really like uh, Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston is actually my number one waiver priority for the week, even though I know a quarterback's not the most valued position in fantasy, but um, I, I believe Jameis Winston is legit. I think um, he passed the eye test for me. I, I was just waiting to see how he performed with after the surgery that allows him to see better, obviously. Uh, he can see worlds better. And uh, Sean Payton, I trust Sean Payton's offense. Uh, I, I think <sighs> Sean Payton's got one of the best, if not the best, offensive philosophies in football. So I think James Winston is set up very well for success in that offense, even without Michael Thomas. And so James Winston is my number one waiver priority. Just because, I, I mean, I like guys at other spots, and just there's just nobody at another spot that I just think is clear cut gotta add uh, gotta own after week one uh, except for James Winston so another quarterback I like also kind of Carson Wentz I think Carson Wentz looked pretty good in, a, in a, his first game action in weeks um, he has no chemistry with those wide receivers those weapons he's got a bad offensive line right now uh, but when the Colts line is healthy when Quentin Nelson is back for instance it will be one of the better lines because Quentin Nelson is probably the best offensive lineman in football um, and he's going to build chemistry with those guys as the season progresses. Uh, so it's only going to get better for Carson Wentz. As long as Carson Wentz can stay healthy and when that line gets healthy, Carson Wentz could potentially be back in the QB1 discussion. So I think he's someone we should probably add right now as a backup quarterback, but definitely add to our watch list for those of you who know how to do that. If you need some help with your watch list, uh, I can help you with that as well. I think you can do it on Yahoo. And uh, I don't know about Sleeper. I don't. I haven't played fantasy football on Sleeper. I've only done basketball on Sleeper. But um, NFL.com, I think, I believe they have some form of a watch list. Every format has some form of a watch list for you to track players that you don't own, but you want to uh, know when they're available or uh, watch them, their trends, how they do. So those are the quarterbacks, two quarterbacks for you. <clears throat> Moving on to the tight ends, fairly deep. Uh, I like both Saints tight ends. Adam Troutman uh, got a pretty high target share. Uh, it's been a potential breakout candidate for from a lot of people in the business. Um, you know, the production wasn't necessarily there uh, in week one, but the target share was. And uh, it is the Saints offense. They do like tight ends. So... I'm trying to someone to track. And Juwan Johnson reminds me a lot of Jimmy Graham early on in his Saints career. Juwan Johnson is a guy who is going to obviously be a big time red zone threat for James Winston and the Saints. So uh, that right there is going to put him in, in the starter conversation to tie in for either one of them. Um, Cole Kimet of, of the Bears had a high target share. He was, he was one of my uh, potential breakout candidates coming into the season, a guy who's going undrafted who probably should have been drafted. I think he proved that in week one. And I think now we need to start taking him seriously, give him some respect, add him to our, our teams as a backup tight end. I also still like Anthony Ferkser. I know he wasn't super uh, productive in week one, but I do long-term like the Titans, uh, the Titans offense as a whole. Uh, I think they just had a bad week in week one. You know, they had a lot of COVID problems. Um, but I think they're they're well coached. I think Mike Rabel's good, um, a good coach. So I think they're going to figure it out probably as early as week two. And the Titans have always had a good productive tight end in their offense. So Anthony Ferkser should continue that trend. He's another guy we should be looking at as a backup tight end. Moving on to the running backs, I only have two. Not a super hot list of running backs right now. Obviously, Elijah Mitchell is going to be the hot guy. Um, every, probably everyone's a waiver number one waiver priority, and you know I, I don't I don't necessarily disagree with that. I just I still think Trey Sermon is eventually going to be the guy there in San Francisco, especially with Raheem Mostert's season-ending injury. So it's hard for me to trust Elijah Mitchell long term. But if you're looking for something a temporary fix, a stopgap for week two, Elijah Mitchell is as good as anybody out there, probably better than anybody else out there. So uh, I don't blame you for targeting Elijah Mitchell. Uh, but for me, I'm not as high on him as most of you probably will be. <clears throat> yeah, excuse me. What is going on? 
<clears throat> also, Mark Ingram of the Texans, I think he, um, it's unlikely that the Texans, I, I think the Texans are going to do what the Jaguars did last year. They're going to win, win week one, and they just think that they're not as bad as, as they really are. And then they're going to lose every single game the rest of the year, the rest of the way out. So, uh, it's unlikely that the Texans will be in such a favorable uh, game script again. Uh, and it's still a committee there, but Mark Ingram obviously looks like the, the alpha dog in that committee in Houston, so he's the guy that we should be adding over David Johnson or Philip Lindsay. Um, I think Ingram, uh, despite the team probably not being great, Ingram should still be a decent backup running back for depth pieces. Um, over some other guys like, uh, for instance, T.B. Coleman. T.B. Coleman can be dropped, I think, for Mark Ingram. Uh, wide receivers, I got five. Five for you, starting with Sterling Shepard. We've seen this from Sterling Shepard before. We know that he can continue. We know he's. We know that it's not a fluke. Um, I think the Giants do have a lot of mouths to feed in that offense. When, when, and when Evan Ingram comes back, that, that's just going to make it even more. Modeled, but Sterling Shepard being the slot guy, um, being really the only slot guy in that wide receiver core, that deep wide receiver core, I think his, his target share is going to be the most consistent of all the wide receivers on the Giants. That includes Kenny Galladay, who I was actually really high on Galladay, but I think uh, my, my, my uh, belief in Galladay is quickly sinking, but I do like Sterling Shepard. I think he's going to be their most consistent pass catcher for the Giants as long as he can stay healthy. Also, Zach Paschal seems to have some chemistry with Carson Wentz now. That's only going to get better. Zach Paschal is obviously a red zone target. Not the greatest play for week two, but definitely someone that I think has earned a roster spot. <sighs> a couple of Cardinals. Christian Kirk scored a couple of touchdowns last week. Um, I think we all kind of forgot about Christian Kirk with the addition of A.J. Green and the drafting of Rondale Moore. Um, Christian Kirk kind of it got lost. Uh, kind of got lost, but I think he, you know, made us remember him. And uh, so he'll be a trendy, um, trendy waiver wire pickup for week two as well. Uh, although I do think that long term, Rondale Moore, who is another trendy waiver wire pickup, is going to be the number two guy in Arizona. Um, Christian Kirk is the slot guy now. Larry Fitzgerald is not around. So Christian Kirk has a slot to himself. So he'll be a sustainable, um, you know, for the season because I think Cardinals are going to be very, very pass happy. That's the Cliff Kingsbury style. So Christian Kirk has a slot to himself. Rondell Moore is going to be the big play guy, the Tyreek Hill type. Um, so he's the kind of guy who doesn't, he's not going to need a lot of volume. He's going to need two or three targets a game. Uh, could get <laughs> a couple of touchdowns, 100 yards. So, um, so he's a guy that we also, uh, he's only going to get better as he gets more comfortable as a professional, um, and more chemistry with Kyler Murray. Um, AJ Green already seems to be trending down, so we don't want AJ Green, but Christian Kirk, Ron Moore, definitely we want stock in them. And lastly, a guy I'm, I'm kind of high on just because I think he's going to be a huge red zone threat this season in a, in a very good offense, a good, very good passing offense. Gabriel Davis of the Bills. I think he's Josh Allen's go-to guy on the goal line. Um, and that's huge because the Bills are, are supposed to be a really good team, really good offense, really good passing game. Gabriel Davis could have a huge breakout year this year. He's a guy that nobody was talking about coming this season, including myself. Uh, and uh, you know that maybe that was a mistake because because I, I kind of saw the trends last last season. Gabriel Davis kind of was becoming the red was becoming the the red zone target for Josh Allen at the end of the season, and he proved it this year by scoring that touchdown, um, making that nice catch from Josh Allen in Week One. I think that's only going to continue. Only um, especially with all the attention that Stephon Diggs is going to command on a weekly basis. Gabriel Davis. I know that the, the Bills did sign Emmanuel Sanders. Emmanuel Sanders will be, you know, him and Cole Beasley will still have a little bit of value, though I, I, I think Cole Beasley is probably going to get phased out as the season progresses. I think Gabriel Davis is going to be the number two guy in Buffalo. He's going to be the favorite again. He's going to be the go-to guy 
when it gets when they get down to close to the goal line, <clears throat> he's going to be the guy that's going to catch. Gabriel Davis is going to catch more touchdown passes than Stephon Diggs this season. That's just my prediction. Diggs, I think, is still going to be the overall better fantasy wideout, obviously. <sighs> Something I'm not. Uh, I need to catch my breath. I don't know what's going on. I don't. Mm, I'm feeling really anxious for some reason. But uh, yeah, Gabriel Davis, a guy that we should be. If not, if we're not adding, we should be trending. We should be watching closely, adding to our watch list again. Just and uh, you know, watching how he trends throughout these next couple of weeks. Um, I think he's gonna routinely be on my personal. Uh, you know, waiver wire Wednesday list, but you know, obviously this is just, just some, you know, my opinion, my recommendations. You obviously, don't have to take it as gospel, and you don't have to to make any of these changes that I'm recommending. But it's just a guide. Just it's just a guide for you. I'm just trying to be your sure path to your uh, personal fantasy football success as you climb the mountain to summit a fantasy football championship. Alright, that's it. That's all I got for you guys. Peace, love, and nacho fries. Uh, blessings your way. Good luck in week two. And hopefully um, things start to normalize a little bit more in the fantasy football world as week one was kind of not what most of us were anticipating. So, yeah. And also good luck in fantasy baseball as uh, you know we're now in week two of the playoffs of the first round so you know good luck advancing um and if you're playing against me uh <laughs> i hope you lose obviously <laughs> so uh, yeah thanks for thanks for watching thanks for the thanks for the the the, the views and the support